Hey, it's Bill Russell. I'm here in my yellow hat. I wore it at Vive and Hims to signify our partnership with Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation and the search for cures and to combat childhood cancer. I'm just blown away by the generosity of our community. With the help of our partners, SureTest, Rackspace, CTG, and some of you giving individually, we were able to raise close to $40,000 at those two events. It is just exceptional. And I would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this cause. If you would like to be a part of it as well, go ahead and hit our page, thisweekhealth.com. You can go to the top blue banner that is on our homepage and click on that to give today. Thank you again for being a part of this effort and this cause. Today in Health IT, since there's so many stories on this, I'm gonna, and some of them are really good, I'm going to do a change update. We're only going to talk about change healthcare and United Healthcare and what they're doing. For today, my name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels and events dedicated to transform healthcare, one connection at a time. We want to thank our show sponsors who are investing in developing the next generation of health leaders, Notable, ServiceNow, Enterprise Health, Parlance, Certify Health, and Panda Health. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. All right. Hey, we're getting all these news stories, thisweekhealth.com slash news. If you get a chance, go ahead and check it out and have people sign up for the newsletter as well. That really helps us out. Appreciate that. And uh, hey, just a quick uh, thing on goal setting. Last year, we set a goal to raise $50,000 for Alex's Lemonade Stand. We raised a little over $50,000. We raised a goal this year. Uh, we set a goal this year of $100,000, and we've already raised $40,000 this year. It's interesting when you set that larger goal, how quickly you get to the old goal. And it's uh, pretty amazing, $40,000 in the first three months. I think one of the things that really has impressed me is the generosity of the community. We have people coming alongside and actually giving personally to the campaign this year. It's not as much just our sponsors and us giving. It's also the community stepping up. And we have a bunch of people who gave $1,000 each at the uh, two conferences. Some people gave $100 and $500. So we really appreciate that. If you want to check that out, hit the website, top banner, click on it, the Lemonade Stand banner, it'll take you to the site. In fact, if you scroll down, at least on the on a desktop, if you scroll down, you can see all the pictures from the various conferences and see what people are giving as well. Thank you for being a part of that. And one last thing, mentor someone, share this podcast with a friend or colleague, use it as foundation for daily or weekly discussions on topics that are relevant to you in the industry. They can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, Change Healthcare. Really cool article, Becker's Hospital Review did an, uh, an article on the timeline which I thought was really good. The Change Healthcare Cyber Attack, a timeline. Again, you can hit this on our website. You can hit the uh, Becker's uh, website as well and see it. And so they go in reverse order, it looks like. Yes, in reverse order. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and come forward. February 21st, Optum reported enterprise-wide connectivity issues. February 22nd, United Health Group said it suspected nation state group was behind the attack. February 26th, ransom group where group Black Cat claimed responsibility. Fitch and Moody said incident carries legal and reputational risk for United Health Group, but will not affect its credit ratings. Hard to believe. Uh, a lot of money. We'll get to that in, in the next story. February 27th, HHS warned hospitals to be wary of Black Cat, the group that claimed responsibility. The message to providers, Aetna said it was aware some providers in its network may not be able to receive timely payments. The insurer said it was prioritizing workarounds to get payments to providers. Fantastic. February 29th, 229, if you will. Change Healthcare confirms that it was Black Cat. Changes, Change said it was working on cybersecurity firm Palo Alto Networks and Mandiant, a Google subsidiary in law enforcement to address the cyber attack. March 1st, Optum introduced a temporary funding assistance program for providers struggling with cash flow after the attack. Change also implemented a workaround system for its e-prescribing program. Yeah. March 3rd, Black Cat received a Bitcoin payment worth $20 million, Reuters reported. March 4th, HA called Change Healthcare's temporary funding program for affected providers inadequate, while U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer asked CMS to speed up payments to hospitals. Larger health systems are bleeding more than $100 million daily. These are all stories that we've covered. March 5th, HHS accelerated payments to hospitals and that, that were affected. Elevance Health's CFO, Mark Kay, said its company initially saw a 15 to 20% reduction in the daily bottom volume of data it received from providers following the attack and now is down about 10% relative to normal daily volumes. Humana's CFO, Susan Diamond, said about 20% of the company's medical claims submitted 
by providers go through Change Healthcare system before they reach the payer, making it difficult to gauge the total medical expenses. March 6, lawsuits begin rolling in against United Health Group over the cyber attack. March 7th, United Health Group releases a timeline for restoring the key change healthcare systems and CEO Andrew Witte confirmed to making things right as fast as possible. As of March 7th, changes pharmacy electronics prescribing is fully functional. Let's see, change is expected to have its electronic payment platform available for connection March 15th. Its medical claims network and software are expected to start testing for recon reconnection on March 18th. Until March 31st, United Health has suspended Medicare Advantage and prior authorizations for most outpatient services. Uh, March 8th, HHA, American Hospital Association, said it will take several weeks, if not months, before hospitals and other healthcare providers can fully recover from the attack. Woody said the fallout will affect hospitals' credit ratings. Interesting. It will affect hospital credit ratings, but it will not affect United Health Group's credit ratings. Thank you very much. March 9th, CMS expanded its response to the attack to include advanced payments to physicians and other outpatient care providers experience claims disruptions. March 10th, HHS called on United Health to take responsibility and ensure no provider is compromised by their cash flow challenges. For all payers, HHS asked that interim payments be made to affected providers and that their prior authorization and other utilization management requirements be put on hold. March 11th, Massachusetts hospitals are losing at least $24 million a day due to cyber attack. The State Hospital Association reported the AMA called for and offered to help create a list of all payers that are offering advanced provider payments. March 12th, officials with the Biden administration summoned United Health Group CEO Andrew Witte to the White House, urging the company to provide more emergency funding to providers. Highmark Health detailed an advanced funding program for providers struggling with cash flow. March 13th, federal government launched an investigation into United Health and change over the cyber attack. Let's, with, in the context of HIPAA compliance, HA urged Congress to consider existing statutory limitations that could limit aid from CMS and HHS to hospitals and providers. 14th AMA said it is dumbfounding, dumbfounding, that following weeks of silence and a lack of assistance to struggling practices in the wake of the change healthcare cyber attacks, AHIP's response is a business as usual approach to prior authorizations. This approach is particularly galling since service outages have exacerbated the administrative burden and care delays. March 15th, an AMA uh, survey of nearly 1,000 hospitals conducted between March 9th and 12th found that 94% of hospitals have felt financial impact from the attack, and more than half have reported a significant or serious impact. Provider claims to payers have dropped by more than one-third. So that's the, uh, that's the timeline. I think they say they're going to keep the timeline going. So hit that story. And if they do it like others, you could keep hitting the same story and seeing that over and over again. So the ne next one is what has United Health Group restored since the attack and group has successfully reinstated the pharmacy system of its change healthcare technology unit after ransomware attack. And this is, where's the story? I don't know where the story's from. Hold on a second. Reuters. There you go. Okay, so it's a Reuters story. They um, changed the unit after ransomware attack on February 21st. Uh, the conglomerate is on track to reactivate its payments platform and begin the restoration of its medical claims network by mid-March, although a complete recovery is anticipated to take several months. Despite the resumption of most pharmacy and payment systems with over 99% of pre-incident claim volume flowing, challenges persist from some pharmacies, particularly infusion ones, and some Medicaid fee-for-service customers. Additionally, United Health is addressing issues related to the processing of prescription drug coupons and insurance claims, with most electronic coupons now being processed again, and a phased reconnection and testing of the claim system planned for the week of March 18th. Wow, that's the, there's just so much going on with these stories. It's Really incredible. All right, let's close with this one. This is uh, Becker's as well. Change attack update. United Health launching medical claim solution. United Health Group has advanced more than $2 billion to providers and is launching software for medical claims preparation beginning March 18th, following the cyber attack on its change healthcare subsidiary. Software will be made available to thousands of providers in the next several days with 
third-party attestation available prior to the services becoming operational. Following this initial phase, remaining service restoration will continue through ongoing phases of activation until all customers have been connected. We continue to make significant progress in restoring the services impacted, so forth and so on. And the rest you've already heard about because it's a rehash of some of the things I just just talked about. I A lot of times I end these today shows with a so what, and you already know the so what. You're living the so what. So it's, it's the question I've been asking and it, with several CIOs and others that I'm talking to, and it is, what is your business continuity plan going forward? The first time you have a, an outage like this, it is easy to point the finger. It's change healthcare. It's fill in the blank, whoever it might be. The second time, it is a problem where you are not really holding the, the wheel of the ship. So right now, if I were a CIO, I'd be analyzing all the different systems we have that are in our data supply chain or in our payment supply chain or, or processed supply chain that leads to effective care, quality care, and leads to the flow of patients effectively through our system. I'd be looking at all those interdependencies and I would have them all mapped out so that I could say, okay, what happened with change could happen with this or this, whatever those five systems are. And then I would be having a, a conversation with the team around what is our business continuity plan around those five things. I'd be looking at the contracts. I would be having conversations with those partners and with those vendors. Again, the first time it happens, it's easy to just point and say, look what happened at Change Healthcare. And aren't you proud of us? We responded within five days or three days or whatever number of days that you did, which again is a big deal. I'm not minimizing that, but when it happens again, they're going to be looking at you saying, didn't this just happen? And you could say, no, it's changed healthcare. And this time it's, you know, fill in the blank of this other system over here. And it is really not us. It's outside of our control. It is an outside of our control. We at least have to make the organization aware of the risks that are associated with the various systems and the interdependencies that we have. And once we have made them aware of the risk, we give them a plan for remediating that risk. We could either have in a three-tier plan. One is remediating all risk. One is remediating the risk that we feel is plausible and that is something that we can afford and attainable. And that we can have the one that's like the bare minimum of at least we did this to minimize the impact on our system. That's what I would be doing as a CIO. That's what I think effective CIOs are doing today if they have not done it already is identifying all those risks for the leadership. This is not an IT decision. This is a leadership decision. Leadership needs to be made aware of the risks that are associated with the various systems within the health system. That's that. That's all for today. That's a lot. This change healthcare thing is just goes on and on. It's really amazing. Just to make you guys aware, we're going to start dropping uh, Drex's two and a half minute drill on this same station. If you are interested in cybersecurity and what's going on in cybersecurity and want to get two and a half minutes from Drex on that, he has been putting those out on LinkedIn. We've gotten a request from people that they want to listen to it on their podcast channel. And so that will be going on here. We're going to be releasing this at midnight generally. So you'll have these in the morning and Drex will be releasing at noon. So they will show up at different times. And these will always have today at the start of them. And Drex's will have two and a half minutes or two and a half or some facts that you'll be able to look at them very easily in your podcast player and say, I'm looking for Drex or I'm looking for Bill. And you can listen to them that way. Just want to make you aware of that and really excited about the content that Drex is putting out there, getting really good feedback from the industry. Appreciate your feedback. Keep it coming. All right. Again, that's all for today. Don't forget, share this podcast with a friend or colleague. Use it as a foundation to keep the conversation going. We want to thank our channel sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Notable, ServiceNow, Enterprise, Health, Parlance, Certify Health, and Panda Health. Check them out at thisweekhealth.com slash today. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.